This instruction is up to date as of April 25th. Make sure to check the website to see if there is any update and what the current version is. This is version V3 of the baseline design mask. Before assembling the mold, start by wiping down the inside. This will make sure that there's no contaminants that can inhibit the silicone curing. It doesn't take a whole lot, but just a little bit of the right contaminants can completely stop an entire cure cycle. If these are coming directly off the printer, you should be fine, um, but it's always best just to be, just be safe. Before assembling the mold, use the pins on the side of the part to snap in to the female end. It should hold in by itself without any issue, but to make sure that you don't have any extra leakage on the side or flashing, then make sure to use these clamps. You should be able to set one in like this and snap them on without too much difficulty. It take a little bit of force, but it shouldn't be too difficult for most people. That's what it looks like all together. So that is the mold assembled. Um, you can apply mold release if you want, um, but from my experience, it releases from PLA without any issues. And now the silicone. I am using Mold Star 20T, um, but I have used Umu 30 before. Uh, check the notes at the bottom of my website for more notes on what the best kind of silicone to use for these masks is. Uh, I like the Moldstar 20 the best, but it has a six minute cure time, or pot life I believe is what it's called, uh, which means you have to work very quickly with it, and I don't recommend it for your first test. Um, use something that has a longer cure time, otherwise you're going to have issues while pouring. Now silicone is really easy. All you do is mix part A, with part B in equal quantities, at least for this silicone. Um, other ones do it by weight. And once you've mixed them by volume, then you're done. You pour them into the mold and it will silify by itself. That's it. So I am going to be using this stuff and I bought these really nice, simple measuring cups that have volume on the side. So you can measure it directly into the cup, which makes it much easier. But any other measuring type works as well. Now when doing this, I like to have the thinnest part on the bottom. That way the thick part once it's already started mixing into itself. So I'm going to pour out 80 milliliters of part B. I'm using a drill with a, just a simple bent rod on the end for mixing. Um, because this only has a six minute pot life, it's very important that you mix this type of silicone as quickly as possible. If you're using something like Umu 30 or something that has a longer pot life, you can mix it by hand, no issue. So, All right now I'm going to add 80 milliliters of part A and then mix for six minutes. So I'll start the timer now. Well, mix until you feel like it's thoroughly done. Now when mixing this, it's important to try and have as few bubbles as possible. Um, bubbles are going to decrease how solid your part is and make it a little difficult. Now we're going to pour it into the mold. Simply pour it in the top. Try and stay as close to the top of the opening as you can. Do not introduce any more bubbles than you have to. There you go. A little bit extra just to be safe. Um, you can use less if you want to, but you kind of play the game of not having enough. So you can see a few bubbles coming up there. That's good. You want them to kind of work out. And now that I've got enough in there, you're going to take the insert. You're going to insert it this way with the text facing you. Put it in, you're going to want to kind of wobble a little bit to make sure everything's properly covered, and then gently 
very gently press it in. Now in this version there is quite a bit of excess that comes out, um, and that's, that's okay. Um, I'm working on a way to minimize that. But this also helps make sure that the mold is completely filled. So make sure you press down until it's solid. It's going to be at a slight angle, and that's okay. That's where it's supposed to be. And now you're going to want to add a weight to the top to make sure that this top mouthpiece stays down. Um, I just use some uh, steel BBs that I have. Anything that's weighted should work. Um, now it's already starting to solidify and starting to harden, so it's we, we just reached the, uh, the end of that pot life there. So now I'm going to leave this for about a half hour, and then I should be good to take it out and demold it. So I'll see you then. Okay, so I've let it sit for a little bit, and we can test the silicone by using that stir cup we had. It's solid, nothing's sticking to it. Um, you can put your, your hand inside, you can feel it. Nothing's, nothing's sticky, nothing um, doesn't feel like it's not cured. It's, it's solid silicone. So now you know you're good to remove the part from the mold. So take your weight off. Everything should be fine. It's going to be a little bit of, com of stuff coming off. Um, I recommend putting down some paper towels when you pour this. Help. Um, you can see there just how much overflow there was. And then the top. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but there is kind of flashing around the outside. So start by taking your side clamps off. Just like that. And now you're going to get a razor and you're going to cut around the perimeter of this mouth insert. Just like this. And it should be fairly easy. There's a few holes that come up to let air out of the mold so that you can get proper fill with it. Um, you can go ahead and cut those as you pull them up. should just peel off like that and now that's all your flashing on the top part. Toss that over there. Try and clean this up the best you can. These are fine to pull out. Um, it's, it's designed in such a way that you're not going to hurt the actual part on the inside when you pull off these strands. Um, anything like that, that's going to come out the sides. Try and clean that up as well. Uh, just make sure it all comes out of the mold properly. And it's important that on this this top part, you try to clean up around here as much as possible because you have to press this through to get it to come out. All right, now we're going to take a screwdriver and you can see there's these slits around the perimeter of the part, just like that, see those? So what you can do is you can get a screwdriver in there and just kind of pop the mold open. You feel it kind of start cracking. Well, not, not cracking, but kind of separating a little bit. Um, should take a ton of force. Actually, I'm going to go grab a larger screwdriver. Okay, let's try this. Put it in there and twisting. Oh, that's a lot better, yeah. And these aren't actually sealing portions of the mold, so you're, you're fine to scratch up that area. It doesn't, doesn't actually hurt the performance. So now you've got it separated. You can see how there's kind of a crack there. You can kind of see through. Now you're going to get your fingers on the edges like this, and then press the top through, just like that. Just like that, so it should come apart. And now you're left with a silicone mask. So now for this part, go around the perimeter and pull off all of these bands. Now careful on these ones. These are attached to the actual buttons that hold the elastic on. Um, don't pull on those because you might pull off the buttons as well. So make sure you cut those ones with a razor. Also be careful not to cut the part. Um, the silicone I'm using has a pretty high tear strength, but even then, once you start a cut, uh, it's going to want to start cutting along that. So try to avoid getting any kind of extra cuts on the part. So I'm just cleaning up these just a little bit, and I'm going to go around and clean up the flashing around the perimeter. Starting like this, just going to work the razor around the outside. 
Um, you can pull this off once the mask's out of the mold, but it, it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, it's, it's much, much easier to do it while you still have it in the mold here. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. I'm trying to get off as much of the flashing around the perimeter as I could. Um, but there's still a bit left, I can get that off later. So now, on the very end here, where this lip is, see that? 100% right here. You're gonna to wanna to work your finger underneath, see that? Just like that, and now you can pull it up. See, and then kinda of start working your way around the perimeter. Stuff's pretty strong, so don't be too afraid to pull too hard. If you stretch it, it actually shrinks a little bit, it makes it easier to pull out. Once you got that out for the tip, just pull it away like that. There you go. And now we need to pull out the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece, you can see it's held in right here and on the edges. So what you have to do is take it like this and stretch it. Just like that. And that detaches the silicone and you can gently roll that out. Now you're left with the mask. Um, you need some cleaning up and I'll, I'll do that real quick. Um, but then you should have a 100% usable, 100% autoclavable filtering face mask. Now these edge pieces you can just pull off. They're not, not super difficult or, or tough. Um, and then I like to go from the inside here and cut along these lines. I'm working on a version where you don't have to do this, but for now, this is the, the quickest way. You should be able to just go in with your finger then and pull that out. Hey, sorry about that. Um, I ran out of memory on the camera and had to go pull it all off and reset it so that I could finish this video. So, almost done. Um, finish pulling out the rest of this flashing from the mouth. Um, this is pretty important. You want to make sure you get as much out of there as possible. Um, otherwise, it's going to inhibit how much you can breathe. Um, again, this isn't ideal. If you guys have a, a better suggestion of how to do this, let me know. <laughs> I, I have a, uh, had an idea to use kind of a, a three-pronged cutter that you can go through the back end and stamp it out. Um, but let me know. Okay, finish cutting off the rest of these, these air vents. It's a little bit hard to cut when they're out of the mold because everything's so flexible. And again, this is, this is more aesthetic. Um, if you, you really need to get the mask done as soon as possible, you can just leave these on and just get them delivered. Um, they're, they're usable as is. Uh, trimming up like this just makes them a little bit nicer. Make them, makes them seem a little bit more professional. There we go. That is one completed baseline design mask. Um, I'll be posting another video about how to use the mask, so make sure you check that out. Um, but yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Happy to help. I'm going to try and post an FAQ as they'll start coming in. Um, and please, if, if you're using this and it's, it's really helping you, please make a, a small donation. Um, I put a lot of time in this and into helping manage my group maker force. Um, and I'm currently an unemployed student, so anything helps. I really appreciate all of your guys' help and appreciate you wanting to help other people by making my masks. Um, get at it.